Hi, this is Drew with Daniel's Ag Services and today we're going to go over covered calls on grain that you have in the bin. So before we get started here, it's important to note that you'll need to have a basic understanding of calls and puts to fully grasp what we're going to talk about here. So we're not going to go over the more elementary aspects of calls and puts. If you're not familiar with that, then you can give us a call. We've got literature that we can help you out with it. We've got, uh, we can spend some time with you on the phone to kind of explain how it works. Uh, we all started with no knowledge of this and we've built it up as uh, whether you're brokers, advisors, hedgers, what have you, uh, over time and built some knowledge on this so we can impart a little bit of that on you and explain how buying calls, selling calls, buying puts, selling puts works. That way you'll have a full understanding of what we're gonna discuss in this video. So fear not if you're not familiar with calls and puts, just let us know and we'll definitely get you up to speed. That way you can understand what we're gonna go over here. And also it's important to note that uh, while we're gonna go over an example here, that is not to be construed as a specific trade rec that you should go out and do in your personal account, your hedge account, a corporate account, whatever. Uh, it's not a recommendation. I'm not saying go out and do this right now. It's definitely something that, uh, that you probably could consider adding to your marketing repertoire, but uh, it's definitely not a recommendation. It is a marginable position. Um, you need to talk to your advisor about it, whether it would make sense to put on for your current situation, whether you've got the cash flow, because like I noted, it is a marginal position. Um, whether it meets your cash flow, account, what have you, a specific amount of bushels that you should do it for. So it's definitely not a one size fits all uh, recommendation and it's not a recommendation at all to begin with. So uh, it's something that you should take the knowledge from and talk to your marketing advisor about. But again, uh, it's definitely something that I'm not saying go out and do. So. With that started, what we're gonna do is we're gonna give you an example of covered calls on grain that you have in the bin. It's a great way to add to your bottom line if you're comfortable with the margin and uh, the specifics of the actual hedging strategy. So with that said, we're gonna go over an example here and I'm gonna do a, a feeble attempt at trying to draw a grain bin here. I, uh, I definitely didn't get hit with the art gene, so we got that, put a little legs on it here. So kinda looks like a fermenter. But uh, with that said, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do an example on 5,000 bushels of corn. So you got 5,000 bushels of corn in the bin and you've got in your mind, all right, if we hit four bucks, I'm willing to let this corn go. So there's a couple of things that you could do. You could call up your local elevator and put, a, put an offer out, say, hey, you know, if, if we got 5,000 bushels of corn here, we hit four bucks, I wanna sell it to you, so give me a call if we get the four bucks. Or you could go to the board and sell a $4 call. So we're gonna be using July futures as an example here and using the June $4 call. So our, the main point we've got here though is four bucks. That's the level that you are comfortable with, whether it be cash, whether it be using the board, what have you. So we're gonna sell a $4 call. That's the course of action that we're gonna take for this example. So we're gonna sell a $4 call. And let's say you can do that for 10 cents. So when you sell that $4 call, you collect that 10 cents minus commissions and fees, and that goes into your account. So you collect 10 cents when you sell that $4 call. So let's say it comes time for option expiration, uh, which will be later on in May of this year, and futures haven't really done anything. Let's just say they're around the 380 level. So if they're down here at 380, that $4 call is gonna expire worthless and you keep the entire 10 cent premium minus commissions and fees, and you're able to add that to your bottom line down the road when you actually do sell this corn that you've got in the bin. So nothing happened, we didn't hit that $4 level that we were looking for, or if we did, we didn't stay above it when it came time for the option to expire. You still got the corn, but you get to add 10 cents minus the commissions and fees to your bottom line. So let's flip flop that, and let's say that come expiration, we're up at 420. So you were comfortable full pulling the trigger if we got to four. Well, we actually got up to 420 at expiration. So 
what happens with the call you've got there? Well, there's a 20 cents difference here. So you got a 20 cent difference between the call that you sold and where the futures are at expiration. But you got to remember you collected this 10 cents as well. So instead of being a 20 cent loss here, it's a 10 cent loss. So you get 10 cents here. So you subtract the 10 cents from 420 and 410 is what you actually get for your grain because you're able to sell your cash at 420. You take the 10 cents difference between the 420 and the four bucks you get because you got to remember you've got to add the 10 cents that you collected in from that. So it's really only a 10 cent loss there and you're actually selling your grain at 410 when you're originally comfortable selling it at four bucks. So uh, there is a third option and that is you could simply have an order working at four at your elevator. If you actually hit that cash price, you could cover the short call that you've got, which means covering it means buying it back. And there's a whole list of factors that can go on there with the, the quickness of which that occurs, the volatility of which that occurs that could affect that options pricing. So that's too variable to get into a specific example. It's gotta be black and white on examples like this that we put out in video form. If you wanna talk about the variables, where if you did let go of your cash corn, if we hit four bucks, no matter what time it happened and not at option expiration, we can give you plenty of examples on that. They just have to be over the phone and based on specific uh, volatility and time factors. Um, but that basically covers covered calls on grain that you've got in the bin. Um, if you've got any questions, simply let us know, pick up the phone, call us. Uh, we've got a lot of experience dealing with things like this and can definitely work with you uh, in your specific marketing style to figure out if it's not only right for you, but something that fits into your operation, cash flow, what have you. Um, and we'll be happy to discuss that. So remember one last thing, again, it's not a specific example. This isn't Drew saying, hey, go out, do this right now. It's the best thing ever. It's something that might be great for you in your operation, but really that's something that only a conversation with you and your marketing advisor can determine. So that's all we've got for today. Have a great day and let us know if you got any questions. When selling options, you may lose more than the funds you invested. The following demonstration is for educational purposes only. The hypothetical example presented does not demonstrate that any account will or is likely to achieve profits or losses similar to those shown. In fact, there are frequently sharp differences between hypothetical performance results and the actual results subsequently achieved by any particular trading program. This material is conveyed as a solicitation for entering into a derivatives transaction. This material has been prepared by a Daniels Trading Broker who provides research market commentary and trade recommendations as part of his or her solicitation for accounts and solicitation for trades. Daniels Trading, its principles, brokers and employees may trade in derivatives for their own accounts or for the accounts of others due to various factors such as risk tolerance margin requirements trading objectives short-term versus long-term strategies technical versus fundamental market analysis and other factors such trading may result in the initiation or liquidation of positions that are different from or contrary to the opinions and recommendations contained therein past performance is not necessarily indicative of future performance the risk of loss in trading futures contracts or commodity options can be substantial and therefore investment should understand the risks involved in taking leveraged positions and must assume responsibility for the risks associated with such investments and for their results. You should carefully consider whether such trading is suitable for you in light of your circumstances and financial resources. You should read the risk disclosure accessed at www.danielstrading.com. Daniels Trading is not affiliated with nor does it endorse any trading system, newsletter, or similar service. Daniels Trading does not guarantee or verify any performance claims made by such systems or services.